Good Saturday morning, everybody. And uh, I offer you God's peace and joy, which is easy to do, considering how absolutely beautiful it is today. Um, I'm blessed this morning to be joined by our friend Ron Zions. And Ron is the next person who has graciously agreed. You know, I, I, we're far enough apart. Yeah. I'm going to honor the audio portion of this video by removing my mask. The, every year, st churches have stewardship seasons, which is, uh, <clears throat> let, if, let's just be honest with one another, it's a form of fundraising. And uh, getting an idea of how much people are giving gives the financial committees and the vestry, the board of the church, an idea about how much they can spend. And it can be as fun as we let it be. And fortunately, at Epiphany, it's actually a lot of fun. It's a, a grace-filled and faith-filled experience. Here at Epiphany, the group that organizes it all is called the Committee on Gratitude. And one of the great ideas that the COG, the Committee on Gratitude, had this year was to shoot a video, which we released a couple weeks ago, which shows Epiphany members telling what they like about Epiphany and why they give, said simply. And first off, I want to recommend that you find this video. How do you do that? If you're watching me right now, you have a Facebook account, and it's on the Epiphany Episcopal Church Las Vegas Facebook page. Just scroll down from watching this video. When you see Kathy Young's face and a go button in the middle, that's the two minute and 40 second trailer that we released on for the Committee of Gratitude. Because it was so successful and is so successful, uh, Father Rick had the idea to ask additional people to answer the same questions. Last week he had Jim and Judy Kern on, and today Ron Zients has agreed to uh, take a crack at the same questions. And so what I'm going to do is put Ron on camera and stay off camera. You might hear my voice coming in from, but I'm going to put the camera on Ron. And uh, Ron, I'll begin right now. Thank you for being here. And my first question to you is, what is it you like about Epiphany? What works the best for you here? And what keeps okay. you coming? Um, when I think of Epiphany, the first thing I think of is just our environment. It's friendly, open, and it's very welcoming. And uh, I've been in church for decades, and now I look forward to going to church. Before, as always, you have to go. And now I really look forward to coming here for the service, mm -hmm. for the sermon, and also for the people. Uh, I have met some exceptionally nice people, and uh, that's extremely important to me. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just glad my, my wife, Letty, and I found Epiphany. It's been very good for me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, Ron, what we've been hearing regularly is that idea of welcome yeah. and Epiphany being exceptional. Is that the people primarily? Is it, mm -hmm. what, why is that? I'm kind of curious uh, about that myself sometimes. Yeah, uh, it's a combination. It's the people, of course. Um, but it's also you and Father Thank you. Um, and Father Rick. Um, I've also answered, asked myself this question. If I went to another Episcopal church and you and Father Rick were not there and these people were not there, would I really look, look forward to going back? I don't know. But here I do. And it's very strong that I want to come here. So I, it's an interesting question. I just don't have the answer. Uh -huh. But there is something special here, and you and Father Rick drive that. Well, thank you very much. I mean, for me, it just yeah. even the campus, mm -hmm. I find, yeah. to be, it just has a yeah. good energy. Right. Um, also, I think, uh, in some ways, we are fortunate that we are small. Mm -hmm. I've been to larger parishes and so forth, and you sort of wave everybody and so forth, but you really do not get to know them. And here, when you do something, when you are part of the church, you feel you're making a large contribution. Because many times, if it weren't for you, it may not happen as well. Mm -hmm. But I think now, what I do here is meaningful. In a larger church, I would not have that feeling. 
Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's that's how I view epiphanies. Very important to me. I feel very relaxed here. Excellent. Yeah. Um, the the committee on gratitude, as you know, came up with you know. Let's face it, marketing yeah. matters. When you say right. McDonald's, I'm loving it, yeah. they, they not only have I'm loving it, mm -hmm. they have it in 150 <laughs> different languages. And I think it's pretty catchy that we came um, up with engage in generosity, mm -hmm. especially since Father Rick, before COVID, mm -hmm. said let's make 2020 really mm -hmm. a year mm -hmm. of engagement with one another, with God, with the greater community. And so they borrowed the engagement mm -hmm. and said engage in generosity. What does that phrase do for you, if anything? The first thought is that I feel I have an obligation to do, to do my fair share. And I feel strongly about that. That I'm supporting the goals of this church, what we want to, what we want to be in the future. We cannot do that without, without money, of course. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying my best to give what I can. And I'm very for, I feel very fortunate that I'm healthy enough, and that I'm able to give. So I look at my budget, what can I do? I do it. And I think it's very important for the church. We have a mission. Uh, let's accomplish it. It just needs our help to get there. Mm -hmm. And secondly, uh, I have very, I'm very confident in yourself and Father Rick to spend the money wisely. And to me, that's important. Again, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I mean... Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yeah. we, uh, not only Rick and, and, and I are, I think, very intentional about being good stewards of the resources, yeah. but the entire board, yeah. the vestry, yeah. all the committees here uh, have a good overall yeah. sensible yeah. approach to uh, finances, I find. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good to know that when, when you do make a sacrifice for the benefit of the church, that it'll be well taken care of. Yes. It's Amen. not going to be chewed up by administrative fees and so forth. Right. So that's, that encourages me to give. Another question we've been asking everybody, again, if it applies mm -hmm. to you, you'll decide, is um, how has Epiphany helped you during COVID? Is there any way that you felt like we've been a lifeline or you know, during COVID uncertainty? I think there are underlying things that I know prayers work, and that's through my experience here and other churches before here. Mm -hmm. So I know prayer works. So I often pray for the people, first of all, who have, who have, who have COVID. I also pray for those of us who do not have COVID that we will be receptive and, and practice what we should be practicing. This, this six foot and the mass and so forth. So I pray that people will follow these guidelines. Mm -hmm. And has, has Epiphany modeled that for you? Have you feel felt like the parish has been responsible on that topic? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It reinforces what others you know, make so apparent. Right. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's a, mm -hmm. a hard dance to get exactly yeah. right. I know you've attended the 8 a.m. service oh, that yes. we've just started back, and yeah. um, it's, you know, for some people, it's still weird taking communion without wine. And, of course, we have in our liturgy the passing of the peace, which is now waving. And, yeah. hey, Ron, how you doing? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, again. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and virtual handshake, you know. Um, I think you've already sort of addressed why you pledge. Right. You seem to have, you have a confidence in mm -hmm. Epiphany mm -hmm. and uh, a confidence that your gift is valued, appreciated, mm -hmm. and uh, being appropriately... Right. Uh, directed. Mm -hmm. um, what uh, the second part of that question though is, what would you like others to know about stewardship? If you were the wise mm -hmm. counselor, and I think mm -hmm. it's fair to say mm -hmm. you are a wise mm -hmm. counselor at Epiphany, what would you share with people that are maybe younger than you or mm -hmm. who just don't know as much about pledging and haven't worked that mm -hmm. thing out in their life yet? What would you say to them? Uh, it works. Here is very, very simply, uh, you pledge your epiphany works. Um, our administration makes it work. Mm -hmm. so. Say more. What, what, is, uh, what does that working mean for you? Is it, is it that our outreach is good or just... Mm -hmm. um, right. We definitely 
Our outreach is good. It's been there. It'll be there more in the future. And we will support that. Right. And we've enhanced our physical space here very much. Mm -hmm. it, it's just important for us to feel that we are doing our part. Yeah. That it gives you a good feeling right, and right. effect to give after you exactly. take that step in faith. Right. Yeah. So I, I encourage everybody to think about this, make your decision, but don't forget it helps and it works. Great. All right, uh, Ron, thank you. You're welcome. And uh, I'm going to jump back on camera. Thank you, Ron, and I want to remind everybody before we uh, jump off that, as I mentioned uh, just a moment ago, we are meeting and worshiping here at Epiphany, South Las Vegas, Gillespie, and Cactus at 8 a.m. That service is a spoken service. It's uh, maybe 35 minutes long, and we're meeting here tomorrow, just as we have the last month. At 9 a.m., we'll have our virtual Bible class, Faith Matters, same as always. At 10 o'clock, we do our online service, a Eucharist with music and hymns, and that's virtual. And at about 1045, we have our virtual coffee hour. In addition to all that, I remind everybody that you can make an appointment to come get communion later in the day, usually quite a few hours after the services. I'm still around here at the parish. You can come by and have a prayer, receive communion if you'd like, and while I'm doing the ad, let's do the full thing. Monday through Saturday, as, as today, we have a 9 a.m. live stream. Monday night at 6.30, we have a race discussion that has uh, three more weeks left. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we're doing Supper, Song, and Praise, COVID edition. And I'll just mention this last Wednesday, Mickey Bonacci spoke, and she has become, thanks to, I guess, the entire the entirety of Long Island, she's become the most viewed supper song and praise speaker. So I commend that to you because you can go on our website and go hear Mickey speak last or things on online and on YouTube as well. And Thursday night, we do Centering Prayer. That's the whole catalog. Thank you for putting up with these regular ads. Have a blessed rest of the day.